Professor Groves and I wanted to go over uh, Module 5 and I have two goals. One is so that we understand the concept to do a test of hypothesis for means. And I'm going to use, instead of having to say that mouthful, I'm going to say TOH. And understand what to include in assignment number five. And more importantly, I hope that you'll enjoy this video uh, and have fun with it. And it will um, help you understand these concepts. Many of my colleagues have focused on the technical Excel calculations. I'm going to focus more on the conceptual understanding in this video. Uh, I will be providing the blank copies of um, my handouts and the, um, the ones that we complete in class. So to get started, we have this assignment that we have to do. And they have been very nice to us and have created templates. And so we have a template. Make sure to use the template. And for the Module 5 assignment, okay, you're going to be using the Pacific region. And what I'm going to do is, because I don't want to give you the exact answer, I'm going to do a random sample from the Pacific region and walk you through the steps. So to get started, you have been hired by the regional real estate company to help them analyze real estate data. One of the company's region salespeople just returned to the office with a newly designed advertisement. It states that the average cost of his house sales is above the average cost per square feet for the Pacific region. He wants to make sure he can make the statement before approving the use of the advertisement. He knows that his average cost per square feet of his homes is $275. In order to test his claim, you've collected a sample of 1,001 home sales from the Pacific Pacific region, and those are included in um, an Excel spreadsheet that you've been provided. So to do this, you're going to write a paragraph with the introduction. And some of the key points that um, we have from, from uh, this scenario is, is that the sales rep dollars per square feet is equal to 275. Oops. Is 275. Okay. Are his sales better than the Pacific region. Okay. And so the question is if they're better than the Pacific region, okay, should he use this ad he was given. Right? So there's actually no point value for the introduction, but keep in mind that when you're writing this report, you're writing it to uh, a non-statistics -st person. And part of your um, articulation of response here is that you really want to make sure that this report is easy to read. It has a good introduction. It has a good flow. There's no typos or anything like that. And 
because this is a statistics report, you do not have to um, write a lot. Make sure that you answer the specific questions. So now let's go to the setup. So we want to do a setup for um, our hypothesis. So we are doing, okay, we are doing, um, we have to define our population parameter. Right? And I'm going to take a little side note here is that you need to understand the population parameters versus sample statistics. Okay, and here we will never know the truth. Here, okay, we want to make sure that we take a good sample and SRS is a, SRS is a simple random sample. Right. So we want to make sure that our sample is representative of the population. And for means, we means our averages. Right? So we represent the population parameter with something called mu. Okay. And you could just write it mu in your report. The mean averages, the sample statistics is called X bar, but in your report it's okay um, to not write it that way. You can write it like that X bar. Now I'm going to go through standard deviations. Okay. Standard deviation, here you're going to see things that look like this. That's called sigma. And you're going to see this all through Zybooks, so I want to make sure that you understand that these are population parameters. We're talking about the population. And keep in mind, if we have the population, okay, and so in our case, this is all Pacific sales. That's the population. And we have a sample and your sample is a thousand and one listings. So the standard deviation here is S, okay, or sometimes you're going to see it as SX. So that's S for the variable X. And then the size and this is sample size. We represent sample size with a little n. And we have the size here, okay, with a big n. And so throughout uh, the next few modules, you're going to be seeing these notations in your reading. And I just want to make sure that you understand them. Now, a little trick here is you can say PP for the population parameters. And SS for the sample statistics. So that's just kind of some notes for you. So now let's go back and what we're going to be doing is we are going to be taking using our Pacific sample of 1001 and seeing if that will support our hypothesis. So, you always have to define the population parameter. And I'll just let you know that, um, and I'm going to use mu throughout this, 
because I think that the, you're going to be more comfortable with that. And then there is P when we get to proportions. And so that's percents, and this is averages. So you want to clearly define what your population parameter is. So mu is equal to the true population mean and we're calling this um, cost per square foot in the Pacific region. So, because our data is only about the Pacific region, we can only in, make statements about the Pacific region in our analysis. And the sales rep is from the Pacific region, so that's not a problem. Now, for our test of hypothesis, right, we have a null hypothesis and we have an alternative hypothesis. Okay. And we have been told that the sales rep is 275. Right. So the, we're saying that mu is equal to $275. And that's the sales rep. And this is why this, this problem, I wanted to do this video, because it's very confusing to um, understand this. And um, so I hope I'm going to make it better for you. So the sales rep make is his, true, his um, dollars per square foot. Okay, so this is the sales rep. And so, we want to know, is he better than the Pacific region? So, we're going to do mu is less than 275. So that's going to say, okay, that the sales rep is better than the Pacific region, therefore, you, um, if our um, analysis comes true, then we would be able to tell the sales rep whether he should or should not use this ad that he was given. So this is what they, we want here. And on the side here, what I've done is, um, from the template that you're using, it's these are the the uh, points that are on the template. Now, when you write your report, you're supposed to cross these out, right? So you don't have to. And it's always nice when you're writing a report that you say that something to the effect that um, the population parameter is, and then give this. The test of hypothesis is, and then give this. And now it says, specify the name of the test and identify whether it's a left tail, right tail, or two tail. Now, I think it's always important to always draw your normal curve so that you understand it. I'm going to recommend that for every single problem that you do, you draw this normal curve so that you understand what's going on. It makes life so much easier. Right? Because a lot of this redesign stats class is to um, be more conceptual. So the sales rep is 275. Okay, we want this to be a this is going to be a left tail test because it's less than. 
All right? And so we're going to get a sample mean. And we're going to turn it into a T statistic. All right? And here is the P value. And I'll do this again later. But specify the name of the test. Okay? So the answer that you want to write in your own words is that um, we're going to do a left tail test. We're going to do a left tail T test for means. All right? So it's a left tail, and because we're using the T statistic, it's a, a T test for means. Right. So that answers this question. We've got that down. We've got that down. And so our setup, uh, at this point, you do not have to put this into your report at this time. But it's good to draw this at the beginning so that you understand how to work through this problem. Great. So now we're doing the data analysis preparation and they're asking us to do a real lot of things here and this is 15 percent of, of your score. So you want to provide a table with the descriptive statistics. And I kind of cheated. And, okay, here's a table. Your sample is going to be 1,001. And so you want to make your table easy for the sales rep to understand your report. So you are asked to provide sample statistics for the cost per square foot. Right. And because we're doing dollars, it's kind of nice to do it in dollars and cents. So notice that this is a very easy um, uh, format to show uh, your sample statistics, your mean, median, and your standard deviation. Next. put this over here to the side. Okay. So you have your table and then you have your statistics and now you're going to describe the sample. And what's important to understand is when you describe the sample you have to remember you're talking about the Pacific region, right? And here is a histogram, and the histogram is a great way for you to look at the sample. And so, um, and then you have these supporting statistics. So the things that you always, when you describe the, cent uh, the sample, is you want to talk about the center, the spread, the shape, and anything that's unusual, like outliers. All right, and I like this little acronym called SOX. Shape, outlier, center, spread. So you have to write this in context. So we look at our graph, all right, and we're going to write something to the effect that um, the distribution for the Pacific region, okay, cost per square feet 
and you'll notice here that it's skewed right. All right. So when you're talking about the shape, you want to say this is skewed right. You want to talk whether it's skewed right or skewed left or symmetric. Okay. So the distribution for the Pacific region cost per square feet is skewed right. Okay. And when we have a skewed relationship, we use the mean when it's skewed. Excuse me, we use the median when it's skewed and we use the mean when it's symmetric. Okay. So the distribution for the Pacific region cost per square foot is skewed right with the center at about. We always want to use hedging words because the statistics we don't know exactly. This is just a sample. Is about one hundred and ninety seven dollars and I, what I'd like you to do is tell me which of the measures of center you used. You used the median right. with okay, there's spread the spread if the distribution is symmetric, then you use standard deviation. But it's not symmetric. So basically, here you want to talk about where the majority of the data is. With the majority of the um, listings between, okay, so I would say probably 100 to 200 square feet. And next, we have to talk about, are there any outliers? And we can see that there are several outliers. Okay. So we can say something to the effect with several outliers. with the largest being about one thousand square feet. Right? So if we're looking at this, we should be saying to ourselves well, do we have pretty convincing evidence that our sales rep who says he makes $275, so what's kind of like, he says that, okay, he's around $275. Is he better than the Pacific region? It looks like he might be, but we want to statistically find out if it's significant. And again, they are having a lot of things that they want included in this part for the data analysis preparation. And this is 
going to be what you're going to want to do in your project, so I'm going to make sure that I go through it with you. Okay, so we have just covered this. Now we have to talk about the assumptions. And this is going to be to get another sheet of paper because I think I'm going to run out of room. Okay. So for assumptions, or they're called conditions, we talk about three. One. Okay. Normal. which is the most important. And you'll notice that you have learned that there is a theorem called the Central Limit Theorem. And the Central Limit Theorem justifies whether we can use the normal distribution, but to use the Central Limit Theorem, we need a sample that's greater than or equal to 30. So. My sample is 50, your sample is 1,001. So for the normal condition, it is met because the sample size is, okay, and mine is 50. which allows us to say the central limit theorem has been met and we can use the normal distribution, which makes us very happy. The next condition is random. Okay. We have to make sure that our sample is random because then there's not going to be any bias to it. Okay? And this condition's met because you were told that you were given a random sample. So, okay? The random condition has been met because we were told the um, yours is going to be a thousand and one, mine's fifty. The fifty listings were based on a random sample. Okay? And sometimes I'll use the abbreviation SRS, which means that it's a simple random sample. Three. Independent. All right. Here we have the 10% condition, right? And to try to make it easier for you, okay, we've got the population. This is the population, right? And we want our sample to be smaller than 10%. Is reasonable to assume
that the Pacific region has more than okay, 50 times 10, which is equal to 500 listings. It's reasonable to assume that the Pacific region has more than 500 listings. Therefore, the 10% condition was met and therefore the, we don't have to say 10%, therefore the independent condition was met. There's really a lot that has to be covered <laughs> in this data setup. And good data setup leads to good analysis. So we have just, okay, and we have just completed the assumptions. So now we're going to go and we are going to do the last piece okay and the last piece is that okay we were told to use the significance level for our test at alpha okay equal to 0.05 okay so we need to Let's, we always have to predetermine our alpha. So next, okay, well, because we're doing means, okay, so we're doing means, so we have to know the test statistic. And so the test statistic for means is the T test. And the form of the T test is you have T, right? And you have the formula in your book. Okay, so I'm going to just show you how to use the formula and how to make the calculation so that you don't make any mistakes. All right. So we have our sample and we're going to go back to our descriptive statistics and here mine is 235.66. So it's 235.66 minus okay, our population parameter of 275 and the standard error okay, is going to be, you're going to take the standard deviation, which here is $193.61, okay, $139.61, and divide it by the square root of your sample size, which is 50. And a lot of students make mistakes with these calculations. So I'm going to suggest that when you're doing these, you take care of the top number, and then you take care of the bottom number so that you get the right calculation. So I'm going to take the there, 235.66 
minus 275, okay? And so that is the numerator, negative 39.34. And now I'm going to take the denominator, so it's going to be 139.61. Divided by the square root of 50, okay, and I'm going to hit enter, and so this number right here, 19.743, okay, that's the standard error. So my test statistic is going to be T. And so I'm just going to take the numerator divided by the denominator, negative 39.34 divided by 19.743, okay? And you get negative 1.9926, all right? Three decimals would have been fine. So we have just covered everything that has to do with the data analysis preparation. So I'm just going to summarize this quickly and then I'm going to um, conclude this part of my um, video and then I'll create a second video so that you can take a break. Uh, too much statistics is not a fun thing. So remember you have to provide a clearly written data table with your statistics, provide a histogram, make sure it's clearly labeled okay, and it has a title Describe the sample, remember socks, okay. the assumptions, okay, so the assumptions you want are random, independent, and normal. It doesn't matter which order you put it in, okay. Alpha, the significance level is alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and alpha means you can use that symbol or you could say alpha. Okay. And the the appropriate test statistic is going to be T. Okay. And so the T is your sample mean minus the population parameter divided by the um, sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this, this part. And I will take a break, and you can take a break, and I'll come back and finish this up. Have a nice evening.